All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. We today are going to be talking about and wondering about prayer, how we use prayer to communicate and to listen about what the church needs to be and become. Uh, my name is Clara Matucci. Um, and I'm Bren, um, and we are a part, we thought a great way to start off the session would be talking about kind of what we have felt the church is calling us to do um, in this 500th anniversary of the Reformation. So we are a part of a bigger group that is starting a young adult ministry in the Synod. We noticed that individually and collectively as a group that while there are a lot of great opportunities for young adults to get involved in leadership in our Synod, there wasn't really a space for us to worship, to gather, to serve together and to just enjoy being with each other. And so we, together with a few others, planned a retreat for this past February where we were lucky enough to have over 25 um, young adults from all over our synod attend. And it's where we taught the wonder curriculum that we're going to do a piece of today. And this is actually two. There is a separate wondering about church and wondering about prayer curriculum, curricula. And so we, um, we're putting them together because we think that it's, they influence each other in really important ways. So let's dive right in. We're going to start by wondering in prayer. Prayer is not always about talking to God. This is about the relationship that we have. And that relationship is what informs us as God's hands doing the work um, that we are called to do in this world. So it can be listening to and simply being with God. We don't even have to say anything at all. It's, it's a really beautiful relationship, actually. Uh, we may be familiar with some forms of contemplative prayer, such as centering prayer, and today we're going to explore a couple of other forms of contemplative prayer that invite us to meet God in and through their imagination. Imaginative forms of prayer open us to wondering in God, and I want to highlight the difference between wondering in and wondering about. Through imaginative forms of prayer, they may lead us to questions about God in and through imaginative prayer, we are free to allow our minds to wander in the wonder that is God's presence with us. So Martin Luther once said that to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. So as we go forward in defining what church is and needs to be, we must be in close communication with God. Relationships like this one need constant intention, reflection, and practice. And so today we're going to practice two different types of prayer, the first being um, Luther's simple way to pray, um, and the second being the Anation Examine. And this uh, session is structured as a discussion um, and as a teaching piece, so it's something that you can take back with you and practice on your own or in other communities and share with youth and children groups or with the Bible study that you're a part of in your own community. I mean, it's very portable and um, we have resources for that. So keep that in mind, how, how we're participating in this today and also how we can take it with us when we leave here. Um, so we're going to start off with Luther's simple way to pray. In the spring of 1535, Luther was asked by his friend and barber, Master Peter Beskendorf, how one should pray. So in response, Luther wrote a brief 11-page paper <laughs> entitled A Simple Way to Pray. In this writing, Luther begins by telling us that it is a good thing to let prayer be the first business of the morning and the last at night. He goes on to describe how he prays through the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and the Creed. Now, since we only have 45 minutes, we're just going to go and focus on Luther's four-strand method of prayer, which he examples through the Ten Commandments in a simple way to pray. And today we're actually going to practice um, with a Bible passage. So Luther says, first, I free myself as much as possible from distractions in order to pray. I divide each commandment or passage into four parts, thereby fashioning a garland of four strands. That is, I think of each commandment or passage as first instruction, which is really what is it, it is intended to be, and consider what the Lord God demands of me so earnestly. Second, I turn it into a thanksgiving, third a confession, and fourth a prayer. Today we're going to practice Luther's method by reading through John 21 verses 15 through 18. As Luther recommends, first we must free ourselves from distractions, so we're going to have a brief silence to center ourselves um, for prayer. Um, also, if you're someone who likes to read along with the passages, feel free to whip out your iPad, phone, um, whatever. Um, I will be reading them up here, though. So go ahead and take 30 seconds or so to center yourself for prayer. So on this first read-through, think about this passage, and as you do, listen for God's word. What do you hear God calling you to do in response to this passage? When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, 
feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you may not want to go. So what do you hear God calling you to do in this passage? So on this second read through, I want you to think about what sort of thanksgiving this passage evokes. When hearing this passage, what do you have to be thankful for? When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you may not want to go. What sort of thanksgivings does this passage evoke? So the third strand is confession. As we read through this passage once more, meditate and think about what sort of personal confession this scripture elicits. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you may not want to go. For me, this, the confession part of this and with this passage makes me, you know, wonder, am I, am I taking care of Jesus' flock as he would want me to. You know, maybe I confess that maybe I'm not doing a good enough job. So the final strand is prayer. On this final read-through, you're invited to respond to God in prayer, either silently or aloud when I finish. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will dress you and lead you where you may not want to go. The second form of prayer, these are both commonly used as bookend prayers, either in the morning or in the evening. The Ignatian Examine is designed to be that type of either morning or evening prayer, but it can be a very powerful way to close the day, which is why we've put it second in the order here. It traditionally has five steps, so if you are planning to take this back to a group of especially children, they can, you can encourage them to use their five fingers to go through the steps or draw a picture of something that comes to mind at each step. There are really tactile options for this. And if you are that type of person, I encourage you to also do the fingers thing, because I'll be doing that. We want this to be meditative. Again, we have a limited time to spend, but please feel free to pray aloud or silently as we go through this. We're in the presence of God. Step one, gratitude. Give thanks to God for the day. The focus of this step is not on the details of the day, but on the gift of the day and the one who gives it. Step two is petition. We ask the Holy Spirit for the courage and wisdom to reflect well on this day. Step three, review. Think about your day as objectively as you can. 
use the following questions as guides. What were the highs and the lows of this day? Where was I enabled to do good? When did I show love? Where did I fail to do good? When did I fail to show love? When did I experience God's presence? Step four is repent. Ask for forgiveness for any sins committed, those we may have named in the last step and any still hidden from you, and for any failings to do the good you could have done. And step five, renew. Pray for the grace to accept God's forgiveness and the courage and commitment to begin anew, to show God's love in all that you say and do. God, we lift up this prayer to you. Amen. So we're going to close the prayer portion um, by just reflecting a little bit on the two types of prayers that we practiced. What did the two types make you feel? Was there anything difficult or uncomfortable about either one of them? If so, what parts and why?